The mind listens to everything you say. The mind is always switched on and it records everything and it never forgets. I'm gonna give you a life hack that if you can apply, it will immediately shift you out of any negative state into a powerful, resourceful, optimistic, confident one. Are you ready? One of our biggest limiting beliefs is the belief of how limited we really are. Rise and shine! It's espresso time! Hey, it's Evan Carmichael, and I am not a morning person. But if you start your day with a morning routine that inspires you, it will change your life. So let's start your day off right together. Grab your coffee, know that I believe in you, and get ready for a shot of espresso from Marissa Peer. I wake up every morning. Espresso, keep me going. I wake up. People come in and they describe, you know, I really want to be successful, but I'd love to be healthier, but I, I want to find love, but I can't get pregnant because. And the first thing we do is investigate, like a good detective. A detective will lay out pictures and go, what's going on here? And they make sense of it. And very much the same. Some people come to me and go, no, I've got unexplained infertility. What is that? I went, well... There's a clue in the, in, the, in the description. It is unexplained. Nobody knows. Your husband's got crack sperm that swims straight and plenty of it. You've got great eggs, great fallopian tubes, perfect womb, but you can't get pregnant because the, the unexplained is here. And many people, when they're younger, will say things, if I got pregnant, my dad would kill me. Oh my God, if I got pregnant with the end of the world and I mean, when I was 17 thinking I was pregnant, oh my God, no, disaster. Oh my God, my dad will be so upset, devastated. When I wasn't, I went, oh, thank you, God. Oh, yes, joy. But you see, the mind listens to everything you say. The mind is always switched on and it records everything and it never forgets. So in a moment of absolute terror or fear or pain or anxiety, there's something called an imprint. It goes in. So a child whose mother says, that cat will scratch you and give you blood poisoning, or that dog's gonna bite you, or that's a dangerous person, or, you know, I worked with a little kid who had a terrible fear of monsters under the bed. Turned out his dad used to always say, you'll get run over if you do that. You'll kill yourself if you do that. You'll drown if you do that. Turned out his dad was the monster because he was scaring him all the time. So you get a, a young person, can be an adult, and you get an imprint. And what we do is investigate where, where did this imprint happen? And when we've got the imprint, which is very easy, you can ask questions to get the imprint. You can listen to the client's story. The one who said, my mum used to cry when I brought up food and so happy when I ate. Or you can use hypnosis and go back like that. And the reason I love hypnosis so much is you go to the imprint. You know, people come to see me within five minutes. They have the imprint. There's no oh, how does that make you feel? And how do you feel now? And let's talk more about that and come back next Wednesday at four and we'll keep this going because studies now say that's, that's actually the worst thing you can do because you just keep the story alive. So we do the investigating, we find the imprint and then we, we interpret it. What does that mean? Why do you think, you know, your dad telling all these stories would now leave you to have this monster under your bed. Why do you think at 15 being terrified of being pregnant could possibly mean that today you've got unexplained ability? And they work it out. They go, yeah, now you say that. If I look at those scenes and look at this scene, it all makes sense. And then you interrupt the belief massively and then you install a brand new belief. You know, you're getting pregnant like a high school kid on their first date, you're super fertile, you've got crack grade A eggs, your husband's got the SAS of sperm and it's gonna collide. So you bring in the very powerful language and you are gonna make a grade A baby. Because of course people say, I wanna be pregnant. I'm like, no, you don't. You want to make a baby that you carry to full term. I have clients who I've been pregnant eight times. You want a perfect, bouncing, healthy baby. So. It's another example of not telling your mind what you want. So the combination of the imprint, the investigate, the interpret, the interrupt, and the install is so powerfully transformational. I'm gonna give you a life hack that if you can apply, 
it will immediately shift you out of any negative state into a powerful, resourceful, optimistic, confident one. Are you ready? Three simple words. It's the best. Whenever something negative happens to you, whenever you feel frustrated, overwhelmed, angry, pissed off at something, the instinct immediately is to go to that negative zone. I want you to, as soon as possible, flip it with those three words, it's the best. It's the best. It's the best. Whatever happened, that negative thing that happened, it's the best. Why? Why does that help? Well, what it does is one, puts you in a more resourceful state. When you're negative, when you're frustrated, that guy cut me off, I'm not growing my business fast enough, something happened in your life, your company, great, right? An employee stole from you, whatever. Whatever negative thing happened to you. When you are complaining and living in a negativity, guess what happens? Nothing, you don't solve the problem. You just sit there and stew in the problem. When you can flip it to say it's the best, what ends up happening is it puts you into a more resourceful state to then actually go and solve the problem. It's also building up your self-confidence. Anytime when something negative happens and you allow that negative thing to overwhelm you, to keep you down, to keep you preventing from moving forward on your plans, then that's the self-identity you're building for yourself. Where if you can say, no, this is the best. This is my chance to show myself and the world what I'm capable of, this is the best. It switches. It creates a new identity for yourself, a new story for yourself that you can start to believe. And this works on minor things as well as major things in life. So from the super minor things, like I've been sitting in this car for a while. <laughs> I've been sitting in this car by myself, filming videos for you. Nina already went inside, but I have to finish these, these videos. And, uh, and my legs are getting a little tired. Little, little, I gotta stretch them out a bit. I've gotta go to the bathroom a little bit. But you know what, I'm gonna finish it. It's the best. Instead of sitting here complaining and doing the, the wiggly dance or whatever, it's, it's the best. This is the best. This is my chance to show myself what I'm made of. That the fact that my legs are a little sore and that I have to go to the bathroom is gonna own me? I don't think so. Let's go, this is the best. All the way up to more major things, right? That's a, that's a pretty minor thing that's easily solvable, right? I could just go inside and come to the bathroom and then keep making videos. When I broke my neck last year, that's a pretty life-changing uh, event. You know, I, I, I broke my neck, compressed my spine, had a concussion, passed out, uh, woke up in a pool of blood, my wife crying, and she wasn't sure if I was gonna wake up or not, you know? Passed out, and I'm lying there on the floor, blood spilling from my head. She was worried that I wouldn't wake up or not. That's a lot more serious than Evan's got restless legs and has to go to the bathroom, right? What I told myself is, is the best. This is the best. This is again my chance to show myself what I'm made of. How often do we get pushed to our physical limitations? This is my chance. The doctors came. Uh, at first it was actually the fire, the fire uh, department came. The fire department came. They, they lifted me up off the floor, put me in a chair, and asked how I was doing. And my brain was kind of foggy. I wasn't thinking super clearly, but I think, I don't know. I feel like I'm okay. I feel like, uh, I don't know. Just let me, I just got a big headache. Let me, let me process this. And they asked me if I could pull on, pull on their fingers. You know, they put my hand out and like pull, pull back with the fingers. And so, yeah, no, this, this is fine. I, I can do that. And, but then all of a sudden my, my left hand started feeling numb. Like guys, I can't, I can't feel my left hand. And then I couldn't feel my left arm. And then I couldn't feel my right hand. And then I couldn't feel my right arm. And I'm explaining it to them. I said, okay, I, I can't feel my left hand. I can't feel my left arm. I can't feel my right hand. I can't feel my right arm. And I'm going numb. And I don't know what this means. You know, I'm, I'm am I getting paralyzed? Do I have, am I having a heart attack? Like what's happening? I, it's totally numb. I'm in a lot of pain. And while I'm, explaining it to them <laughs> this is it sounds crazy but if you can make this shift it will change your life when people ask me how are you so positive how are you so optimistic this is the secret hack that i use while i am losing control of my body in my head i'm saying this is the best 
and I, I'm telling myself, even if it's not true, I'm telling myself, I am the greatest patient these guys have ever seen. I am sitting here calmly explaining to the fire department that my entire body is shutting down. What would most people do? What would even the Evan from 10 years ago do? Be freaking out. Be freaking out. I can't feel my arms. I can't feel my, <laughs> I can't feel my hands. Freak. But does that serve the situation? No. Does that, does that help them? If I'm yelling at them, does that help them? No. Does it help me heal and explain what's going on? No. Does me panicking and freaking out serve anybody? No. So while this extreme thing is happening, I am telling myself, I am the greatest patient of all time. This is the best. And <laughs> again, it even sounds crazy for me to explain it, but that's what actually goes on and, and that's what gets you out of the situation faster. Now that I think about it, you know, a little bit removed from the situation, I still can't believe that we kept going. You know, I can't believe that we kept doing the tour when everybody wanted me to come home, and it's probably the safe thing, smart thing for me to do is to go home. But I wanted to keep going on my tour. I wanted to at least try, not to just by default give up. And so I finished my tour with my neck in a, in a, in a brace and wearing that thing for 60 days and dealing with the concussion all along the way. And, and listen, it was also a burden on my family. Nina had to now drive this giant Suburban where I was doing the driving before. And that was really difficult from her. I, I mean, she had to do everything. She had to help me get dressed in the morning. The only thing I could do was talk, right? I couldn't lift anything. I couldn't put my own clothes on. I couldn't go to the bathroom by myself, nothing. The only thing I could do was talk, which thankfully for my tour, <laughs> that, was a, that was the only skill I needed to do. Sit at the front of the room with ice packs and pillows behind me and just talk. That's all I needed to be able to do. So the, the one skill that I need to be able to do, thankfully I could still do, but otherwise, I couldn't do anything. And, and Nina and um, Danny, my camera guy, had to lift an extra load. They had to they had to step up, and I'm super grateful that they did. But in looking back, I realized, man, I can't believe I did that. You know, when you get overwhelmed, when you face a new difficulty, and then you rise to the occasion, you start to build a new identity that you're the kind of person who rises to the occasion. Then what happens to the to the next? problem that comes up. You rise to the occasion. You keep rising to the occasion because it's the best, right? Because this is your shot again, your chance to show yourself in the world what you're made of. Where if every time something bad happens, you, over, you, you don't overcome, you succumb, right? You get overwhelmed, you struggle, you suffer, you complain, you say why you can't make it. Then you never get past that barrier. Then you can only build to a certain point and then boom, problems hits, you fall back. You never build the life you want. You never get the momentum that you want. You never get the happiness that you're after. You never make the impact that you know you can make because you're getting stuck. And so the next time you feel stuck, just try it. It may sound crazy. It may not make any sense to you. Listen, if I was watching this video 10 years ago, it probably wouldn't make a lot of sense to me, but try it. Give it a shot because it just might change your life. And what do you've got to lose? one session, one little attempt. So the next time, whatever you're frustrated by, whatever you're overwhelmed by, maybe there's something right now in your life that is frustrating you, that is overwhelming you, that is really bothering you. Somebody is being mean to you. Somebody ripped you off. Somebody screwed you over. You're frustrated with your own lack of success, whatever it is. Take a moment, breathe, and tell yourself those three magical words. It's the best and then see how you feel. Now I've got a special bonus clip that I think you're going to enjoy. But before that, it's time for the question of the day. I want to know what was your single biggest takeaway from this video and what is your specific plan of action for the next week? When you just watch a video and get motivated by it, you have a 35% chance of following through. But when you get motivated and then create a specific plan of action, you have a 91% chance of following through. That's what we do here at Believe Nation. We get motivated, but then we do something about it. And when you commit to other people, you increase your chances even further of following through. So what was your biggest takeaway from this video? And then what is your plan of action around for this week? Put it down in the comments below because I want to celebrate you. Also, if you want to have more self-belief and more self-confidence, I've created a special free program where every 
day for the next 254 days, I will send you an unlisted video to help you boost your self-belief and self-confidence. The link to join for free is in the description below. Successful people do what they hate to get to where they want to be. Doesn't matter how talented you are, if you don't have self-belief, you're not gonna get anywhere. I believe in human possibility, human potential, and I think that one of our biggest limiting beliefs is the belief of how limited we really are. And so my interest is to give people the science to begin to understand how powerful they really are. And I think that science really is the language that does that really well. And, and the new sciences like quantum physics and uh, neuroplasticity, neuroscience, neuroendocrinology, you know, uh, psychoneuroimmunology, the mind-body connection, epigenetics, all of those sciences point the finger at possibilities. So I want to create a language for people from a philosophical or theoretical standpoint for them to begin to understand what's possible. But then I want to be able to have those people begin to wire that information in their brain completely because learning is making new connections, right, in the brain. But remembering is maintaining and sustaining those connections. And it's so much easier to lose our vision than to remember it, right? So then we have to begin to hardwire the brain or install the neurological hardware in preparation for an experience. So the more people understand what they're doing and why, then the how gets easier. So I wanna then set up the conditions in an environment, in a, in a, in a workshop where people can begin to apply or personalize what they learn so that they can have an experience. An experience then further enriches the brain, but the prize of an experience is an emotion. And once you start feeling unlimited, once you start feeling abundant, once you start feeling worthy, now you're teaching your body chemically to understand what your mind is intellectually understood. So knowledge is for the mind and experiences for the body and people begin to embody the truth of that philosophy. Now, if they can repeat it over and over again, it'll become innate in them, it'll become natural, second nature, it'll become easy. They begin to master that philosophy. So I want people to begin to understand that Thoughts are very powerful, feelings drive our thoughts, and that they can begin to create a better life for themselves once they understand some of these principles. If you want another awesome video from Marissa Peer, check it out right there next to me. I think you'll enjoy it. Continue to believe, and I'll see you there. Thank you for sharing your opinion, which I can choose to not let in. A lot of my friends back in the day were like, why do you feed trolls? I'm like, because I respect other people's points of view. And